Hello and welcome back to another Radiography Simplified video. At this point, we are getting close to the end of the series on radiation biology. I hope it's been a fun ride. In this video, we'll talk about the survival curve. But before we do so, why don't we recap on where we left off in the last video. We closed off the last video by quoting my favorite law in all of radiography, the law of Bergoni and Tribondo. In fact, I was just telling someone the other day that when I was an undergraduate radiography student and I was asked a question relating to radio sensitivity, I would often start my answer by quoting this law. This is because I consider this law to be the bedrock of radio sensitivity. The law already tells us that the radio sensitivity of cells depends on cell division and degree of differentiation. And because we already know that different cells of the body divide at different rates and differentiate to different degrees, with some cells more differentiated than others. We can boldly assume that different cells of the body have different degrees of radiosensitivity. This is where the survival curve comes in. It helps us to demonstrate the sensitivity of a particular cell type to radiation. A cell survival curve is generated through experiments. First, the cells are cultured. This is a nerdy way of saying the cells are grown under laboratory conditions. After culturing, the cells are exposed to a specified dose of radiation. Then, the ability of the cells to divide is assessed. Cells that retain the ability to divide are reported as the fraction of cells that have survived irradiation. The process is repeated with other doses of radiation, and then a graph is generated. Thus, survival curves essentially demonstrate the amount of cells that survive a type of radiation at different doses. This is very important in radiation therapy where it can be used to estimate the amount of cancer and normal cells that would be affected by radiation. This is an example of a plot showing the survival curves of different types of radiation. The dose of radiation is plotted on the horizontal or x-axis, while the logarithmic value of the surviving fraction of cells is plotted on the vertical or y-axis. Now let's analyze the individual survival curves. Do you remember our previous conversation on linear energy transfer? If not, you might want to check out our video on distribution of dose earlier in this series before attempting this part. Okay? Now we go forward under the assumption that you are familiar with everything we talked about in the distribution of dose video. The shape of the survival curve depends on the type of radiation involved. For low LET radiation, the curve changes very little at low doses, but at higher doses we start to see a linear decline of the curve. What this tells us is that at low doses of low LET radiation, the cell is able to repair the damage caused by the radiation, which is why we don't see a major reduction in the number of cells that survive. The portion of the curve that changes very little is called the shoulder of the curve. On the other hand, at higher doses of low LET radiation, the radiation is able to overwhelm the repair mechanisms of the cell, causing a decline in the number of cells that are able to survive. This is demonstrated by the linear decline seen at higher doses. As we already know, high LET radiation is a lot more intense. Even at low doses, the damage to the cells is so great that it is not easily repaired. This is why the high LET curve shows a linear decline all the way, without a shoulder like the one we have in low LET curves. Now we go into some technical stuff. We'll close off this section by discussing some parameters that can be obtained from the survival curve. Now, before we go into the explicit discussions on these parameters, you need to take note that the discovery of the survival curve and all the facts around it is as a result of scientific research. And as we already know, research is continuous. If something is discovered through scientific research today, something else could be discovered 10 years later. That improves on the original discovery. That's what happened in this case. Over the years, different scientific models have been used to describe cell survival to radiation. We'd base our discussion on a model that applies greatly to human cells. This is called the multi-target model. The multi-target model was the popular model for many years. It operates with the assumption that there are multiple targets in a cell that must be struck by radiation for cell death to occur. Let's talk about the parameters in this model. First, we have the slopes. The curve is said to have an initial slope, D1, which represents cell death due to one strike of radiation, a phenomenon known as single event killing. The curve also has a final slope, D0, which represents cell death due to multiple strikes of radiation known as multiple event killing. 
Another way to look at it is that both slopes are the doses of radiation required to reduce the fraction of surviving cells to 37% of their original values. Another parameter in the multi-target model is the extrapolation number, n. This represents the width of the shoulder of the curve. A large extrapolation number means the shoulder of the curve is broad and vice versa. Another parameter which also sort of represents the width of the shoulder is the quasi-threshold dose, dq. By definition, it is the dose at which the straight portion of the survival curve, if extrapolated backwards, would cut the dose axis through a surviving fraction of unity. I know that's a bit complex. Let me give you some time to take that in. Let's say it again. The quasi-threshold dose is the dose at which the straight portion of the survival curve, if extrapolated backwards, would cut the dose axis through a surviving fraction of unity. Why is the term called a quasi-threshold dose? A threshold dose is a dose below which there would be no radiation effect. As you've probably heard before, stochastic radiation effects can occur at the lowest of radiation doses, meaning there is technically no such thing as a threshold dose for radiation effects. This is why we use the term quasi-threshold dose, which means almost threshold dose. Also worth mentioning, it is because radiation effects can occur at the lowest of levels that we are advised to practice radiography using the as low as reasonably achievable or alara principle. We talk more on stochastic effects later in the series. The parameters in the multi-target model can be related in this expression. Log extrapolation number equals quasi threshold dose divided by final slope. Remember, to keep things simple, we have focused on the multi-target model. There are other models which have also been used to describe cell survival. An even more recent model is the linear quadratic model. We won't go into that for now to keep the series as concise as possible. We'll explore it in future and more advanced series. I hope you enjoyed this video on the survival curve. I understand it can be a lot to take in. Feel free to go over this video one more time to get a full grasp. We're heading to the last three videos on the series of radiobiology. See you in the next video!